Good evening and welcome to the news round of our Tuesday the 10th of October. Before we get into the news, please remember to like this video, share your views in the comments and share the video with your family and friends. Teach them! Always make sure the message I reach them! Now for the news in detail. The police have launched a manhunt for a gunman who attacked a Berlium security team in Harborview, St. Andrew, on Tuesday afternoon. Information is that about 12.30 p.m., the Berlium team arrived at the Harborview shopping center to deliver cash when the guards were attacked by men who pulled up in a silver Toyota Axio motor car. A shootout ensued before the gunman escaped. Head of Corporate Communications at Guardsman Group, of which Berlium is a member, Lieutenant George Overton, said that a guard received very minor injuries. He says no money was stolen. The robbers reportedly fled the scene and abandoned the Axio in the Bull Bay area before boarding a black Toyota Camry. Local investigators are turning to their international counterparts in the United States for help in the probe of the kidnapping of 10-month-old Saria Palwell and her mother, Tashina Patterson. It is understood that DNA samples of the human remains found in the hills of East Kingston on Friday have been sent to the Centers for Disease Control, CDC, in the U.S. to conclusively determine if they match those of Saria and her mother. Sources say DNA testing was done locally. However, the quality of the samples extracted from the remains was so degraded and minute due to the intensity of the heat fueled by the gasoline used to burn the bodies that local technology was unable to conclusively determine the identities. We are being told the samples were sent to the CDC on Sunday. The question was put to the Director of Public Prosecution, Paul Lowlin. All I will say is that the police investigators have been engaging senior members of my office and by extension myself and we have advised that no stone is to be left unturned in respect of dotting all the I's and crossing all the T's. When pressed, the DPP said the police have been acting on her office's advice to ensure the evidence in the case meets robust standards. I do know that the police investigators are resolved really on our, dare I say, advice. It having been sought to make sure that no stone is left unturned in respect of making sure that every opportunity is taken to dot every I and cross every T in this investigation. Police have arrested four people in connection to what is being treated as a kidnapping investigation with potential charges of conspiracy to murder. The prime suspect, Leoda Bradshaw, shares a child with MP Philip Paulwell. The four people who were killed during a home invasion in Duanville, Trelawney on Monday night have been identified. The deceased, all of Trelawney addresses, have been identified as 51-year-old Cordell Graham, otherwise called Bayer. 43-year-old Nicole White, otherwise called Sheena, both of Duanville District. 21-year-old Amelia Livingston, otherwise called Melia, and 27-year-old Akeem Robinson, otherwise called Eddie, and Petra, both of Kinloss District. Reports are that about 9.50 p.m., the Falmouth police were summoned by residents who heard explosions. Upon their arrival, the police saw four people suffering from gunshot wounds. They were taken to hospital where they were pronounced dead. Four children and other individuals who were reportedly at home were unharmed. Alpha last night I don't see until now. First things that like this happen here. Things are um, similar but not this way. This is more dangerous. Awful. Sad. Sad, sad, dangerous. Things happen in this community. I'm a cousin. Oh, feel, feel bad. That's why I stay up for last night until now. I don't get to sleep until now yet. 
and I don't reach back on my own I just stay. I cannot sleep, I can't eat, I, can't, I don't know what to do. So we have to just take it up and just go on like how we can go on like that. And just sing as God intervene in the matter. People's National Party Council a caretaker for the Friendship Division in Westmoreland, Tyrone Guthrie, has reportedly been charged with the forcible abduction and rape of a 16-year-old. Guthrie is accused of raping the 16-year-old student at his home in June. He was charged after he turned himself over to the police. Reports are that around 3.30 p.m. on June 15, the 16-year-old girl went to Guthrie's home to assist him in pulling out his hair. It is alleged that on completion, she went into the accused man's house to get her cell phone, and as she was about to exit the door, he held onto her hand. It is further alleged that the teen was held down and forced to have sexual intercourse against her will. A report was made to the police and an investigation was launched. On Monday, Gotcha reportedly turned himself into the police and was subsequently charged after a question and answer session. Meanwhile, the PNP says Gotcha will not represent the party in the Friendship Division at the next local government elections. In a statement today, the party says it has cut all ties with Gotcha due to the allegations. Two men were gunned down in Spanish Town, St. Catherine, on Tuesday morning, sending motorists and shoppers scampering for a cover in the town. The murders happened at the intersection of Young and Nugent Street minutes after 9. Reports are that about 9, a group of men were conversing along Nugent Crescent and Young Street when they were attacked by gunmen. When the shooting ended, two men were reportedly found suffering from gunshot wounds. They were rushed to the Spanish Town Hospital where they were pronounced dead. Investigations are ongoing. The police are probing the murder of a man following a gun attack in Poros, Manchester on Monday night. The deceased is 25-year-old Jamario Sewell, a resident of Redbury District near Poros. Reports are that about 8.15 p.m., Sewell was among a group of people sitting on a veranda on Magill Street off Old Poros Road when they were attacked by a gunman. Police said the attackers assaulted another man before opening gunfire, hitting Sewell multiple times. Sewell was taken to the hospital where he was pronounced dead. The other man was treated and released. Defense attorney King's counsel Peter Champigny is cautioning against the normalizing of mandatory minimum sentences in criminal cases. Champigny was reacting to news that the office of the DPP intends to recommend mandatory minimum penalties in anti-gang matters. He says the implementation of these sentences will impact pleas in court. But what I would caution against is the concept of mandatory minimum because when you have that, it doesn't uh, cause a situation where a person is inclined to plead guilty because there is no benefit from that. And already we are seeing that being, we, we are seeing that being played out. We, we see that being played out in the gun court where the mandatory minimum for certain offenses are 15 years and persons are prepared to, you know, to take their chances and say there is really no benefit in giving a plea um, because whether I plead guilty or whether I go to trial, I'm certain to get 15 years. Champagne says while he agrees with the stiffer penalties for gang members, he does not want mandatory minimum sentences to become normalized. All in all, what I'm saying is that yes, I can understand and appreciate the necessity for an increase, especially leadership in terms of a gang. But um, I would caution strongly against this trend where I see um, a direction towards mand mandatory minimum. It doesn't go well for guilty pleas, let me put it that way. Meanwhile, Director of Public Prosecutions, Paula Llewellyn, says her office is almost ready with its submission to lawmakers concerning an increase in the severity of the sentences handed down to persons convicted of leading and directing a criminal organization. The DPP had signaled at the end of the recent Wondan Klansman Gang trial that her office would recommend the significant increases in the penalties under the country's anti-gang laws. We already have a draft, a nine-page nine page document with um, the justification and a list. We are proposing for the most part when it comes to offenses prosecuted in the circuit court where you will lift the ceiling 
to life imprisonment for the most part, given what the leader of a gang can cause by his instructions, by his policy prescriptives in terms of how the gang is to operate and what damage they are to cause. We will propose that there is a mandatory minimum of 30 years. The DPP says a review of the sentencing regime under the 10-year-old anti-gang legislation is overdue. Most of the offences, the maximum was 20 years or 25. The largest one was leadership, where the maximum was 30 years. So we are proposing that in 2023, the legislation having been around for 10 years and given the nature of the horrific events that came out in the evidence in respect of the kind of terror and damage that this gang can wreak, that now is the time for a full review of the sentencing regime so that we can have such adjustment being made. A revision to the new Bail Act will allow the police to detain a suspect for up to 48 hours before bail can be considered. That is according to Minister of Legal and Constitutional Affairs, Marlene Malahu Fort. Previously, a person arrested or detained on reasonable suspicion that he or she has committed an offence was to be considered for bail within 24 hours after their detention. Malahu Fort says notwithstanding the increase from 24 to 48 hours, a suspect can be considered for bail within the first two hours of being detained. She says the increased time for a consideration of bail is largely to facilitate administrative matters. Suspects in custody have a constitutional entitlement to bail. That is unless there is sufficient cause for keeping them in custody. Malahu Fort says post-conviction bail can be granted, but only in limited circumstances. She says a person on bail before conviction and who is appealing the conviction or sentence may be granted bail by the court in those circumstances. And that is it for your news roundup for today. We would appreciate you liking this video, leaving a comment, and sharing the video with your family and friends. Have a good evening and see you next time.